个。I think is, that's, it. that's everybody, right? Um, is anybody missing its partner? Alright guys, so today's lab time we're gonna we're gonna use it for final project. Um first um Jesus let me let me share my screen with you guys. Um, all right, sometimes you miss good one clean website. Right. So we're gonna start with the project and, and all the documents I have uploaded so far. Um, let me keep on going. So of course my final project, and then you have the outline. Somebody So let's start with the outline. I want to go over this really quick. I have uploaded up, uh, updated the dates uh, for some stuff. But anyways, let's start with within the outline. So basically, you, are, you will be required to design a path for the robot for the scuttle robot to reach a target location. Um, while you're doing that, you're going to be scanning for uh, obstacles on the, on the path, right? So um, you're going to be using actuators and sensors for this. Sensors being the lighter and actuators being the motors to move around, okay? So these are, these are the requirements. You have teams of four students, uh, which you have um, find before. Uh, actually, sorry, you, you, you actually put together the groups when Chris taught the class. Um, like four weeks ago, so each team will have uh, will have an assigned target location. So, for example, in this image, uh, let me just pull out the chart so I'm aware. All right. So in this image, you can see you you will begin, you know, with zero zero as your global coordinate frame, and then you will have to reach your target coordinate frame, be uh, which is going to be given to you. It's already, actually it's already given to you. Uh, also, if you guys, while you are here, you can just open this one as well. This 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 document has a PDF of all the teams with all the names on it. Uh, also, it has what scroll number they will um, be assigned to. So there is four scrolls. I have four scrolls right here, and then you know, uh, three teams. Uh, there is eleven teams. So. Three teams are gonna share the the I think hold on. The three teams are gonna be sharing the fourth the scuttle. Oh no. Well hold on. Never mind. Two teams are gonna be sharing the scuttle uh for the scuttle number four, but for the rest of the scuttle, the scuttle number one, two and three, uh each scuttle will have three teams. Pretty much. Okay, so target coordinates here. This is some meters. I'm actually going to add that up. Uh, this is your target coordinate. Okay, so you will be required to to go from zero zero to your target coordinate. So, for example, let's just take an example of team one target coordinate two meters, two meters. So 
will be two meters on the uh, global X and two meters on the global Y. So you'll be around, you know, somewhere around here. And then you, to, to achieve that target coordinate, you have to create your own um, path, right? And the path has a couple of requirements. It has to have three sharp 90 degree turns. So, and then also three turns with radius. So as an example, uh, an example, you can start straight and then take one 90 degree turn, take another 90 degree turn, make a radius, keep going, you know, as, so this is one turn, two turns, this is one turn here with the radius, and then one more sharp turn, that would be three sharp turns, and then here, and then here, that will make two radius, three radius, so you have one, two, three, and you have one, two, three. And then you reach your target location, right? So at least you need to have that many, that many turns in the path. Um, calculations. So you, if you re pre, if you recall on lab three, we did we did some path planning. Pretty much, I remember if we had to do some path that was like oh, that was like this, right? So you're gonna be doing something similar, but you need to perform the necessary calculations for the wheel speed for each motion. So you will have to, for each motion, you have to calculate PDL and PDR. Right? So for each motion, so let's say from here to here, uh, let's say I went up to position 0 0.1, so I went up one meter up here. So I need to find the speed of both wheels. So you know when you go straight, the condition is that. Sorry, sorry, I'm writing in my mouth, so it's not the best. So you know when you're going straight, you have this. So if you just want to calculate one of them, be equal to the other one. But anyways, you have to calculate the wheel speed for each mo each motion for each motion. But uh, also take in consideration the maximum wheel speed of the scuttle is nine traders per second. So this is going to be code that will be tested in the scuttles. Actually, that's how you get checked. Uh, that's how you you get uh, most of the points for the scuttle for the actual final project. I'll, I'll be sending out the rubric later on. I'm st still deciding on the rubric um, for this project. But yes, you have to limit the wheel speed to nine traders per second. So you can calculate, you know, everything from that. You can calculate, you know, how much time you want to spend each motion, the x dot, the data dot, phi, and then what else? And then, you know, you can calculate your x global and then y global, sorry. And that's actually what you have to do down here, but we'll get there. All right, so the LiDAR sensor must be used during the entire path for obstacle detection. So keep in mind it's obstacle detection and not obstacle avoidance, right? When the, the, the big difference is that with obstacle detection, you just, you just wanna know if there is something on the path or not, right? So how are we gonna do that? So if an object is closer than 5, 0.5 meters from the scuttle, an error message must be shown in the GUI, right? So you have you will need to have a GUI, and the GUI the first thing that we need to show is that if there is an object around the score less than 0.5 meters, right? And if there is an object, you must stop immediately. You know, the the wheels. So um, we do not need to avoid and return to path. No, you don't need to avoid or return to path. You just need to stop. So you stop the PWMs and output an error message to the GUI saying 
there is an obstacle on the on the path, and this is that's that's as, as, uh, that's all for the errors, right? That's the, the only error that you you should be outputting to the user that there is something on the path and it can continue, right? Um, the GUI also must display the global position of the scroll after each motion, right? So that's the second thing that you will show on the GUI. The first thing is the error message. If you can you can have like a LED in green for good uh, that there is nothing, and then red that there is something, right? Um, and also the GUI must display the global position after each motion. So let's say I went I went up I went up one meter up here, right? So now my global position will be zero one. And then I turn one meter here. So now my global position is one, one, right? An example. So that's after each motion is complete. Uh, I want you guys to output the the global position, okay? On the GUI. Questions so far? Feel free to unmute, unmute yourself if you don't want to text. All right. So once, yeah, uh, are the motions? So yeah, that's, that's actually that's actually a really good que uh, question. Let me write that down so I can clarify with everybody. So in this case, uh, we're not gonna consider motions to turning. If you're just gonna turn 90 degrees on on uh, actually, you know what? If you want, because let me let me finish let me finish with the with this chart over here, and then we'll we'll come back to that question, All right? So once the robot reaches the target position, the scroll needs to output an Excel table containing the information shown in Table One. So if you want to count the turn in as motion, it's, that is up to you, right? That's just more data you will have to output to the table. So after after the robot reaches the target position, it will like when it's done, that's it. It, it needs to make an Excel table and it needs to output this table as an Excel file, Excel file, a CSV file. And this CSV file will contain the following information. For each motion, right? For each motion. And you you can count the motions to be the turning. But if you don't want to do that, don't do that. Just just count the motions as displacements, right? So it's not don't turn, just displacement. I mean, it's up to you, right? So you will you will output each motion, and then for each motion you're gonna write the PDL, PDR, X dot, data dot, duration of motion, the global X and global Y. Right, so you will need to basically each each motion you will need to output something to the table and keep updating. It's up to you. You will need to look up how to make a Excel sheet in Python super quick. And that's why I actually gave you guys four people because four people is a lot. And I know one person. I know one person will have most of the responsibility of the code because that's how it works. You know, you, you can't have four people working with the same code all the time. But what you can have is, is uh, you can assign to each person a portion of the code. So let's say, um, let's say uh, somebody else has the responsibility of, you know, doing the calculations by hand for the PDL, PDR, fix dot, all that stuff. And then the other person needs to, um, the other person needs to just take that and write it, put them in code, right? And the other person could be writing the code that will make the Excel table. And the other person will, uh, you know, you can divide up the responsibilities here. And you have four people to do that. So I think, I think it's very doable. Um, so how are you gonna verify all that, right? Oh. 
Yeah, so you don't have to also keep track of the global X and global Y continuously. You can just update them when once each motion is finished. You know, but if you want to have them keep, uh, you know, keep them updated, that'd be, that'd be cool. I'll give you more points for that. Uh, but, all right, any questions so far? Is the final, pro the, the final project clear for everybody? All right, so let's talk about the next page because this is very important for you guys. So the project proposal requirements. So you have a presentation plus a proposal due on April the 14th, right? The first, the proposal presentation should be limited to three slides in three minutes, right? It should include project topic plan and pre preliminary results achieved in, uh, in the past week. So I think, I think a good um, a good presentation should be, you know, showing your the, the path that you have chosen, just showing the the length of each motion, you know, showing the calculations if you have them done by then. It, sh it shouldn't be that hard to do by hand. Uh, you could you could also show who's gonna do what, like the responsibilities, um, and also talk about how could you implement the code. Right. Uh, also, you need to write a proposal can contain no more than 500 words, so that's super easy. Uh, and the proposal should contain the following information, right? So you have you have to present the mission, you have to explain the same thing. So, you know, what, what are you doing? What are you doing this, you know, presenting the mission, right? The sensing, what sensor are you gonna be using? You have a LiDAR sensor, explain that again, right? What actuators you're gonna use DC motors, right? Things to move around. You have data collection. How are you going to do the data collection? Because you need to collect data, you know, to the Excel sheet. You need to collect the X dot, data dot, PDL, PDR, XY, you know, X and Y, right? So how are you going to do that? Uh, also, data collection is how are you going to collect the data from the layer? Right? How are you going to process that? Um, description over all, all the footing. And this, this try to explain, like, uh, in like from like a yeah like an overall explanation of overall explanation of how you're gonna connect the dots you know how you're gonna um do this right like a kind of, kind of a flow chart but you're gonna have to do a flow chart just playing with words and failure modes failure modes here would be something like uh explaining what kind of errors would you get uh and the the only error that you would get that I'm giving you to, to use is the lighter, right? Um, you need to take that into consideration. So this is what you have to do on the April 14th, right? Uh, also for the final project outcome, the demo report and presentation. So this information, Dr. Song told me that he was gonna discuss with you guys. If he didn't do that the previous class, make sure you talk, you ask him tomorrow. So we can have a final date for for the demo report and presentation. That I think you want that. But all right, any questions so far? Now we can jump into how you're gonna do this. All right. So let me show you what I'm I'm gonna finish today. And I'm gonna upload. For you guys. All right, so we're gonna do something called a scroll online. <laughs> All online scroll. What does it mean? Oh no. Let me do that. What do you read that? What does it mean? Tell what not included in the first. Present to me. Oh, so, so what, by that I'm I'm saying that. Okay, back to the obstacle detection and obstacle avoidance, right? I'm not. 
asking you to like basically explain your scope of the project. So you're not required to um, to avoid an obstacle, right? You're required just to stop, right? So is what 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 is that you're doing and what is that you're not doing? So when I come back and I see your mission, because if you want to do obstacle avoidance, that's up to you, right? If you include that you're going to do obstacle avoidance as part of your project, I'm going to grade you based on what you proposed, right? But if you spe specify that you're not going to go around the object, but you're going to stop and output the answer, you see, that's what I'm, I'm trying to say. Is that clear? Good question. What is this document? All right, so I'm gonna upload this. So we're gonna use the online photos, right? Uh, instructions of operation, driving space. So the scuttles must stay within the designated three by two meters driving space when operated uh, as shown in figure one. So you can see this really, really clear picture <laughs> of what's going on. So. I'm setting up. I'm setting up four scores, four scores in my living room. Uh, the space I designated on my living room is a uh, three by two rectangle. All right. So you can see that you 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 are allowed to use the scroll within this three by two square, which is going to be shown in tape on the video. And then this right here, this area, is a parking spot. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over what do I mean by parking, and then you can see for her step. That's what I'm seeing. So once you have finished using the robot and your time has ended, you will need to park your scuttle inside the parking space. Okay, so that's clear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was trying to do that yesterday, but I I, I I just I just crashed the robot in the parking space. Anyway. Do not drive the scuttle outside the driving space. Why? Because there is people living in this apartment, right? So you don't want to crash into people. Also, I'm trying to focus the cameras on this driving space, but if you drive outside that, you're blind, you know? I'm going to take, I don't, I'm, if you go out the, the driving space often, I'm going to start taking points off. All right, so you, to move your scuttle using your keypad for repositioning, refer to move, a scuttle with keypad, right? But that's another section. Teams. All right, teams. Uh, as you as you saw before, you have teams right here. Team one to eleven, right? Each team have four members, and each team has a scuttle number, right? So, no, here. Okay. So each team needs to have a captain, right? And you need to decide that today <laughs> for this section. If so, if I know there is some teams that are as a whole in here, but if, for example, if you make if you have partners in other sections, talk to them. Be like, okay, who's gonna be the, the captain? And the reason the reason I'm doing that is just make everything easier, right? Easier for me, easier for you. So by having one captain per team, they all the all the communication. The team is gonna have with the with me, the TA, is by is through the captain, right? I'm not gonna answer questions regarding scuttle, online scuttles or projects to um, to nobody but the captain. So the, the reason why is because um, I'll explain why because it's actually needed for the whole project because this this online scuttle thing is through the network, right? So. When there is issues, I don't want the four people of the same of the team, you know, texting me about there is an issue with the score. I want that. I want a captain just texting me, hey, we have an issue. Okay. I mean, and, and I will contact the captain, and then the captain will send, you know, transmit information to the other team members, right? So also, so its job is to communicate directly to T, for to TA for issues, scheduling, or questioning questions regarding online score. So a scheduling, and this is gonna be huge. That's why I want everybody to get the captions as soon as possible so I can start communicating. Okay. Also, 
also, also, the team captain will be giving a login and a password for the Squirtle Cloud9 and Notred. So, you guys know you have, you notice how, you know, team one, two, four has have the same target coordinates, right? Well, they have different scores. So, if, if it's about, you know, looking somebody else's code, you can't do that because each Squirtle has a password, right? A password for Notred and a password for Cloud9. Right. So each captain is the one that's going to receive the password and be in charge of it. Uh, yeah, so I'll explain that to you later. So that's also why I need the captain to be cho uh, chosen quickly so I can share the password and they can, uh, can stop, uh, start working. All right, target, target coordinates. There is 11 teams of four students each, therefore each cuddle will have three teams. For for the, uh, with the exception of squadron number four. Squadron number four has two teams, right? So that means there is potentially um, a, a, a space, for, uh, a time space for that squadron that will be uh, left out for like the teams that have issues with other squadrons um, and they need more time or something like that. They will use the time space that's uh, missing um, on squadron four, right? So each team will have a target coordinate that they need to reach with this, their squirrel. Their target coordinate for each team can be found in the PDF, right? You guys all have that. So team will need to reach a target coordinate, right? We already went over this. Okay, time of, time of operation, right? Escorts. Escorts and streaming services will be available in the following times. Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. So, and weekends from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. What does that mean? That in the whole day, there is, it's gonna be 10 hours. 10 hours where the scrolls are gonna be online and the videos are gonna be online. So, um, after eight, I'm gonna unplug everything <laughs> so I can go to sleep and, you know, have the feeling that nobody's watching. <laughs> uh, also in the weekends, you know, six, gonna be six hours. Uh, so, Per day, there is 10 hours of scroll time. So we'll need to, with, this, with the captains, we can come up with a schedule to see you know, where a team can work in, in its scroll per day. Right? So you can just, you know, if, if your time is not there yet, you can just work on the code or work on the report as a team. And then once the, your time of scroll is on, you can just jump into the scroll. All right. So captain needs to contact me for scheduling, okay? So um, since you're gonna be, you know, trying to make a path planning for your score, uh, you will mess up a lot, right? So uh, one of the things that I kind of came up with, it was a way for you guys to, you know, put the scores back to initial position. You can, so you can just try your own path. So let's say you mess up your path and then you know, you put the scuttle back to like an initial position that you want to try, you know, and then go from there, right? So you, you are going to be able to move the scuttles using not a keypad, but we have to like, I wanted to get the keypad, then, but then I was kind of like challenging um, to do, but so I ended up using Nautilus. And I'll show you what that looks like. I haven't written the instructions for that yet. All right, this is the most important one. How to log in to your score, right? So, today we're going to do the following thing. Okay, so to go go to the online score website on your own time window, on your time window. So when you have your, when it's time for you to use a score, go to the website. All right, so I made this website. Very simple website, which for scores, right? You can see each score has Cloud9 and Node for each of which one of them. Right now, if you try the links, uh, score 2 to 4, they're not connected right now because I don't have them plugged in, so they're not working. But first thing, you can go to the streaming. If you go to the streaming, you'll find the following things. Okay, while, while it loads, I want, I want to say something first. This system so far is kind of fragile, right? So what does that mean? That the modem that I have in my apartment, 
it limits me a lot on things that I, I would I would normally do in my in my college station apartment. All right. The modem here is from AT and T, so you know for for forwarding is freaking hard and complicated. But anyways, it loaded. So I want I, I actually want to invite you to be very patient with this project. So as you can see in I'm gonna have three streamers, three cameras looking at this product. Uh, you you can see right now in the frame that the squirrel tool, so they have numbers <laughs> to make it easier to identify. Um, the squirrel two, three, and four are facing the wall right now. I just wanna give you like a little observation of the space so you can have reference, right? So imagine, imagine that this space, this driving space here is basically, you know, the first frame. Pretty much. So I'm gonna actually take a reflective tape and put it on the floor so you guys can know the actual dimensions of the box. Right? You also have another view here from the wall in front of it, in front of the previous tournament. And it's also looking down into the spot. So you have many you have multiple views. And I'm working on putting more cameras on. Just each camera is a pie. <laughs> so I need to set up the pie <laughs> first. And I also have um my 3D printer here, so I can, I mean, I have one, but it's broken. Uh, it's right there, actually, in the corner. But, uh, so I can't print, like, mounts for cameras and stuff like that, so I need to, I'm, I'm actually hot gluing, them, hot gluing them into the wall, so you can see there is one. Actually, that one is the one I have on the screen. That one over there. You know, it's very tall. So, actually, I'm trying to get them into the ceiling, but the ceiling is, three meters from the floor. It's a very tall steel uh, apartment. Anyways, all right, so this is cool so far, right? So let's go to the cooler stuff. Let's control the score. So uh, le let me run an example here on my screen. And then, and then we'll pick a captain from um, one, of, one of the teams that is present. So. If you, if there is a team here, a whole team, I'm, I know that there is a whole team in here. Let me see. Uh, team three is present, right? The whole team, right? Uh, can you guys pick a captain? Really quick. Oh, um, um, you can. It's okay, Kate. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Kate. I have your email, so I'm going to send you the, the login and password of the score. But let me just run, let me show you what you're going to see. So I'm going to just open an incognito tab, right? So we're going to go to my website, MXCP score. Right. So let's say this is the thing you, this is the first thing you open. So score one is on. Hopefully this works. Because otherwise, I'm going like, to jump from my window right now. <laughs> I spent too much time on this. All right. So if I, <laughs> if I go to Cloud9, so you see that when I click Cloud9 on my screen, nothing happens. You just open a new tab, right? So you see the URL on the top. On the top part, you see that it's the, it's the link, right, my website. And then it's column. So column 3000, right? 3000 is the port, the, the, the Cloud9 port of Scorer 1, right? Each color, each color has a different port for Cloud9. So let's say, oh, sorry, let's just go back to the point. I don't wanna, let me repeat that so you guys can see. I click on Cloud9 and nothing happens. Just, just shows the URL here. It actually haven't been applied or it's not looking for it. So I have to click enter, right? So now that I click enter, it's loading. Right, so I'm gonna do, okay, so you can see here that the first thing that happened is that it's asking me for signing, right, username and password. So, um, I have my, hold up, hold up. Let me look for my passwords. Yes. Nope. All right, so, the logins for all of them are Debian, 
for all of the photo, but the password is different. So I'm, I will send Kate the password later. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it first and then I'll let you guys try it. We let somebody else that's not in my apartment try. So we can test if the network works or not. Okay, so the password for this one is, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not try that. <laughs> All right, so I log in into it. So what I was back to what I was saying. <laughs> back to what I said. This is it's kind of slow at first. It's, I I keep saying that it needs to like warm up a little bit. So it's just gonna stay like that a little bit and you click you keep reloading the page. You see, if you reload the page, it works. <laughs> so you have you will have to learn and adapt with these things, right? And that's how what we do best, adapt to things like this. I wish I could make it more efficient, but I didn't have much time. All right, so I'm here accessing Cloud9 through the internet. <laughs> so I'm not accessing locally, if you know what that means. I'm accessing um, publicly, right? So you have the same things you have. It takes a little bit longer to load. It's normal. I'm going to start cleaning up this. Yeah, it takes a little bit long to load. Oh, it broke. Hold on. Sorry, guys. So, um, I would recommend and I would really ask that one person is uh, on the score of third time. Um, and the reason why is that I don't want it to, I don't want it to get super um, slow. Which is already, it's already like a little bit painful. Um, that's why the best way I'm trying to give you like advice how to deal with this. Um, so I will have, I would recommend for one of you to be connected at, uh, on it. I don't know why it's not freaking working. Oh, Jesus Christ. It loads, but it's just disconnected. Hold on. Ah. My God. Also, I just opened no threads for score one. So let's Davian and then I don't know why Cloud9 is giving me issues. All right, seems to be responding much faster. Okay, so that's one of the issues I had. When I try to access it from my network, I have always issues. But when somebody else accesses it, it's easy. Oh. I will try with Kate in a bit. So when you guys meet up together in Zoom, like having have that person on the computer and you you share the screen like I'm doing, and then you guys all can work and collaborate on it. This is taking forever. Oh, it was gonna load. Yeah, it takes forever to start, man. But after it starts, it's fine. Let it load. All right, so 
as you can see here, this is the flow to drive the robot. So if I go to my dashboard, Jesus Christ, it's taking forever. You know what? Okay, uh, let's try with the computer. I'm gonna stop sharing. Can you share, please? I'll guide you through it. See if that's the issue. That I'm always have issues when I'm like I have. I had people driving this from different countries yesterday. All right. All right. So where do I need to go to find it? Yeah. So can I see your screen? Give me one second. Yep, take your time. So if you go to go, go to the final, go back. Oh, by the way, do you have good internet? <laughs> Moderately, yes. <laughs> Let's try that. So go to yeah, project no final. Actually, just type this. I'm gonna type type on your Google on your engine, yeah. Like MXCT, MXCT 300, Scorol, that, DDNS, DDNS, that, net. All right. All right, so you're in the website. And I'm going to send you privately. So if you go to Scorer 1, so we're going to be using yeah, Cloud9 Scorer 1. Try, type that, try that. All right. Um, I'm sending you on privately the password. She laughed about the password. <laughs> <laughs> right, try that. Uh, connection to the site is not private. I spelled Debian wrong. I got now. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was it. All right. Now go back to that website and then right click on no thread of the scroll one and then it's open a new tab here. Yeah. Same thing. Yes. All right. So now, if you go to Cloud Nine. See if that's still working. All right. So if you go to the terminal that is down there, yeah, and type CD, change directory to home. All right. So now type uh, LS space. Uh, you could dash, yeah. And then all. Enter. So you see there is a, a hidden folder called that vitals. Right? So cd to that folder. So cd dot. No, so cd space dot vitals. 
that di that is that one now ls yeah you, you, can, you can just type ls nothing no no dash so you see if you type ls enter so if you see that she's listing the files within the that vitals directory and there is one called motor control that type so you will type sudo space motor control that file enter and then Same. type the password again okay then type the the old-fashioned password T E M P P W D. What was it again? T E M P P W D. Same password. Okay. Oh, sorry, we missed the pipe. The pseudo pipe and motor control that pipe. But you guys see, like it's working for her. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's working. Python 3, yeah. I'm gonna make you drive this tonight, today. <laughs> All right, enter. And, okay. All right, so now we're gonna go to Notre. And then open the dashboard. Remember, if you go to under underneath, like deploy on the right side, what it says, what is like the graph? Yeah, there. And then the little thing next to team, next to the team. Yeah. You see, that wasn't showing for me. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, all right, so can you click S? All right. <laughs> okay, don't click it anymore. Uh, okay, <laughs> can you put, can you go back to the website? Which one? The original website, yeah, that one. And then write, uh, open a new tab for the streamer on the top. Drop, that, then that, right click, yeah, new tab. All right. Now put the screens, you know, next to each other. So you want to have the Notre on one side and the the video on the, on the other side. There we go. All right, click on B. <laughs> oh, it, oh yeah, <laughs> it moved. All right, now it tried to turn. Do something with it. You have two cameras, you can drive. So the streamer is lagged, lagged a little bit, but like when you click it, <laughs> yeah. So you're basically driving from your house, <laughs> whatever you are. <laughs> yeah. You will have a feeling for emoji lags on the streamer. And I think one streamer is faster than the other one, I don't know. Well, yeah, so as you can see, what she's doing right now, she's just driving it uh, around and this is just gonna be a tool for you guys to, um, to reposition your scope, right? So whenever, let's say you, you know, you went out of the path and you were trying something and it didn't work and whatever. Um, then you will use this this tool to to you know drive it back to to the driving space. And also, once you're done with your your, your time, um, you will need to put it back in the parking parking spot, right? And everything 
will be put in, will be laid down with tape on the floor, and the streamers will be active, you know, actively looking at it. Um, so you can you get you can you can drive it around. Um, so yeah, how how do you how do you feel how do you feel that is is it responsive? Kind of. I think I have way too much power right now. <laughs> I know. Imagine like four squirrels. So basically, like what I'm trying to do at the at another semester, we can have race. We can race the squirrels. <laughs> we can make like a obstacle, you know, around the, my apartment, and we can drive and and do some stuff. Uh, <laughs> you want to jump? <laughs> All right. Um, so. Okay, I'm gonna trust you that you're not gonna share the password for Scuttle One. Oh no, we got it. <laughs> guys, um so as you can see, the you're gonna be sharing Cloud9 and you're gonna be sharing Notre. Right. So you're gonna be sharing for teams uh for the people that are in Scuttle One, Two and Three, you're gonna be sharing Cloud9 and you're gonna be sharing Node. So there is a big there is not it's not a big issue, but uh, I think it, it would be nice if you guys um, uh, don't look at other people's other people's code. And the reason why is that you know you're gonna be sharing cloud nine, so you have access to uh, anything like anything in your Scuttle folder. You know, so you you'll be able to look at people's people's code. Uh, so don't do that. Um, also, another thing I want to mention is Node-RED also. Since you're gonna, you're gonna be required to make a flow for Node-RED, you, I will ask you to make, you know, a tab for your team, right? So each team would have its own tab, right? Um, so, and the reason why is because I asked, I asked Daniel to help me checking that people don't have the same code. So he'll make sure that like if you just copy and paste somebody's code, that will will know. Um, so that's for that. Also, what else? Also, there will be some rules regarding how you leave Cloud9. So whenever you you finish working with Scuttle, you will need to close all, all the tabs you open and basically leave leave it as if it's new. So just one terminal on, right? Um, that's some other thing. Uh, I also have, I tried to make this as easy for me because one of the, the problems was that Professor Dr. Song, he was, he, he kept telling me that, you know, it might be too, mo too much work for me to be aware of everybody's code, right? Um, so I made some code that will send me a text notification when and scroll battery is down. So I can just go really quick get the battery and just put a new battery on so you can still keep working um i have at least i never had so many batteries with me i have like 45 you know, the of the little batteries that we have at the lab so you know there is a notification for battery i just put a new one also um regarding cloud nine let me see you have any questions If you do, let me know because this is good. I'm trying to I'm trying to show you guys this so we can find problems early, and then try to find a solution early too. And also, you guys are the smallest uh, section, so um, I wanted to show you first before everybody. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Oh, the lighter. Also, the lighters are connected to the scuttle, so you can, if you want to go back to the videos and oh, you you want to park it? Try to park it. That's what I was slowly doing. <laughs> right. Click it. I want to see. I can hear it on your, your audio, and then about thirty seconds later, see it move. <laughs> I'll try to fix that. I'll, I'll talk to my to Daniel. Also, a, a recommendation also wanted to do is that if you can you if you could find the person on your team with the with the best internet connection. You know, because inter internet connection is, is required for this, right? So, you know, whoever has the best download speed can can have access to the code. 
Yeah, well, give me one, give me one more. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good. I'm not going into the other one. There we go. Uh, just, <laughs> just put it on, put it on parking. Oh, uh, all right. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to tell you guys. Um, if you have more questions, let me know. Uh, also, for the teams that are here, if the teams that the, the captains have already been decided, please email me so we can all make a group me. Uh, yeah, so we can make. Actually, Kate, can you can you make a group me and add me on it, and then you can be the administrator and add people since you know more people in the class. For like our lab. Yeah. So just make yeah, just make a group me and add me on it, so we can start adding all the captains. So we're gonna have all the captains are gonna have one group. Okay. So we can all communicate really quick, right? And then you guys spread the information to your teammates. But anyways, that's all I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I think it worked pretty good. Uh, I was I was scared for a second that it wasn't gonna work, but it worked. Uh, so if you have any comments, recommendations, questions, or anything, uh, let me know so we can fix that early. If you don't have any more questions, I'm gonna stop recording and I'm gonna upload. Uh, Who are the other teams, Captain? Oh yeah. Um, I don't know. So if you find a captain, like a team has a captain, please email me or text me, either way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, can, can you can you talk to your teammates and just, you know, discuss really quick who is going to be the captain? Yeah. Thank you. And they just email me the name so I can add him to the group. Um, that's it for today, guys. I'm going to upload this video to 